we're uh, delighted to have you stay for us for the, stay with us for the next uh, um, section of the panel. And we'll welcome back Michael Salmoni, thank you, and Katrin Van Giesel. How are you both? Hi, good. Great. Now I'm hoping so the uh, chat is um, available for anybody who um, would like to contribute questions directly to the panel. And uh, um, I, uh, uh, I'd, I'd like to probably just kick off with with a conversation um, with you with you as a group. Um, about this uh, this concept that each of you brought to life, this, this this view about your perspectives of where we are at the moment, that um, open banking has kind of created the stepping stone that is now launching the next uh, level of um, innovation and excitement. Mm -hmm. I, I was thinking about, you know, if you jump off a stepping stone, before you make the jump, you've got to be pretty sure that you're not going to slip and that the stone's not uh, unstable. Um, I'd be curious as to what are some of the things that you think are the stability points that uh, organisations that are looking to move to the next level uh, need to think about. Um, I'm, uh, uh, I don't know which of you would like to go first. Um, Michael's nodding his head, so maybe uh, <laughs> you kind of what you might talk about from the, you know, to executives. Katrin, talk about, you know, within a bank, and Monica, give us, you know, the fintech view. That would be fantastic. Michael, please. Yeah, if you challenge me on that, I'm uh, glad to go first. Um, yeah, I, I, in fact, I, I'm not sure that's actually the right way of looking at it, to be honest. Um, I think the days when you planned ahead and knew what was going to happen and have a sort of six, three, 18 month uh, uh, return on, on investment, those days are over. So this is all about experimenting and trying to find smart ways of doing, failing quickly, all those things. So I think the sort of solid stepping stones are not not um, are hard to identify at this stage. One has got to try creative ways of doing things, and we've seen many surprises in all areas, and we're going to get that that here. So be be bold, be exper be experimentative. Is the, is my summary on that? If, if you accept yeah. that. Well, if I can add on that, I think uh, I think that's that's definitely true. I, I, if you look how we do it within KBC, in, in practice, we have something what is called um, the Surf Studio, and uh, in that studio, we experiment really with uh, with possibilities that could be there, but also um, it's also about indeed trying out things. Um, for example, uh, the first time we integrated uh, tickets from uh, public transport into our uh, into our mobile app, um, we were really not sure whether it was going to work or not. It was really just go there, try it, and see if it indeed works, and whether it's it's you can read about it, you can study it indeed for eighteen months. But uh, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, and uh, then you have to also. And that is sometimes difficult. I have to admit, for a big bank to stage it like that, to fail. And to, to embrace sometimes that failure and say, okay, fine, you know, there is no such thing as failure. That's just learning and uh, moving on to a next step. So, um, but uh, I fully agree that it's not, there's no framework to really say, okay, what do we have to do? What is important, I believe, is that you somehow narrow down the areas of where you're going to be active. You cannot conquer the world at once. So that you say, okay, for example, if you look at the areas where we are in with, um, both in our being all in one app strategy as in our be everywhere strategy it's in uh, for example in mobility we do a lot of things in, in mobility we already have a footprint there so it's not illogical to build upon that in housing is the same uh, now we're also going more towards telco and energy which is way for way uh, further away from from our core but that has been more of a natural development now than uh, than if we would jump immediately there Uh, thank you, Monica. Yeah, uh, I uh, yeah. How should I say? It? I beg to differ. As a as an old banker myself, but a fintech startup, I think the big thing is like there are clear ways of f going forward. The directives are clear. The banks aren't compliant. I think that's one of the big problems. So if we think about, I had a panel discussion earlier with with uh, also Tink's uh, CEO and co-founder Dali and Shalene, and uh, they have 3,500 bank connection, which of 80% are not using the APIs. And it's because banks aren't compliant. The good news is it's an evolution. So we're just in the beginning of time. It's all about consent management, understanding who the part is, 
I do agree about the, the fail fast. I personally don't like about failing fast, but it's a learning fast. And here banks should really set aside a budget and work with fintechs. And it should be always, always focus on business value. So integrations and tech stuff. I'm sorry, I'm an old developer and banker. Nobody gives a peep on that because tech has never been a problem. It has never been a problem. So it's about business value. If you don't know why you are doing, to whom, and why they need to use it, don't do it. Oh, interesting. So, um, so, so great, uh, great insights. Um, I, I, the, um, the other piece that you know was very consistent um, in each of your your views on on where where we are in the industry at the moment is that the, 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 the expansion and the pace at which the opportunities are arising is, is growing very, very quickly. It's like, you know, we've got this kind of ex exponential impact effect on whether it's, you know, the mashup or the opportunities for, um, uh, you know, the product penetration that you've got at, at KBC in terms of, of thinking of new opportunities. What do you think are some of the, um, you know, kind of cultural and um, impact downstream uh, internal processes views for people with coping with this pace of growth. Um, Katrine, you talked about choosing where not to focus on as much as where to focus on just now. Yeah. Um, uh, and you talked about some of the things that are now going on in your bank's um, you know, infrastructure and capabilities. What are some of the things that you're helping people? Or what, are you, what are some of the conversations that you're having about coping with this pace? Yeah, well, it's... Um, at a certain moment, I think it was like like uh, two years ago, I kind of had a feeling we almost had a company with two speeds, people who are really at the forefront of innovation, um, going out, reading stuff, working on, on innovative projects. And then you still have a lot of, uh, in the product factories and so on, people who work there, who, who still have to make sure that the business as usual runs um, be, while other people are looking for new, uh, new pots of money, to state it like that. Uh, what we have done now recently within uh, in KBC is um, there has been defined a, a program for the entire company, which is called, um, it's just a learning program and which is called Hot Skills. So there are a number of skills that everybody within the company should have. And they are typically linked with uh, digitization, with data. So everybody knows to a certain extent what it is about, uh, how it is applied, why it is important. Because like that, um, it's also about employability of your workforce because a number of things are automated and these people have a lot of, of uh, skills often that you don't want to just let go. So then you have to retune them, but then they have to see the value of that as well. So that is something that uh, how how KBC, how we work with uh, with with the people, with, uh, with everybody actually within the company. Mm. What are other people's um, views in terms of this uh, uh, workforce employability and digital savviness that uh, um, uh, people are, are recognizing as a as a theme to to be ready? Yeah, I think for for us and in general, it's a mindset. Uh, it's like growth mindset versus fixed mindset or whatever you want to call it, because it has nothing to do with age. You You can have a very young person to be very fixed and, and uh, not being able to handle change. And then it's about leadership. So uh, it's about being clear, having ambitious goals, at least for us, and having a way to get people involved. At least if I look at back at my own career before Enfuse and, and working at uh, a very old bank before, uh, I, what I saw was that the, the new product process, which is the process when you have done the innovation, you have done the business development, and you want to push it out to market. And it has to go through all the 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 steps within the company, whether it's the compliance, etc. And I, I and I knew that one of the biggest challenges was that we didn't onboard people in the early stages, in the ideation, because as Katrien said, there's a lot of good uh, quality insights if you just ask and there needs to be a process to get these people involved because otherwise if you think about business in a bank it's about the business development and CEOs about, are about growth and risk management because that's banking and then you have the IT and compliance which is about cost reduction and no risk and they are totally clashing if not managed in a good way 
So to put it short, it's about mindset and leadership, really, to get everyone involved and having the skills because skills can be taught. So the mindset, it's a bit a bigger challenge. Yeah, uh, I just add my my sixpence worth to that. Uh, uh, no, I would totally agree with everything that, that that's been said. Also, with the mindset uh, topic, I, I would just like to add two things. What one is maybe you don't need that everywhere, right? There are some areas in a bank or an organization where you need a lot of creativity, and there are some where I prefer them to be more down to earth. If the if the bookkeeping, I don't want too much creativity there, and in the compliance office, uh, maybe also. So uh, I don't think it's it's helpful to make uh, to tie everyone with the same brush. You need it in particular areas and not in others. And so sometimes in this run to become so digital and creative, some some have overshot, and we we all know some examples. Of some banks have been rather too creative in some areas where they shouldn't have been. Uh, but that's another topic. Uh, the only thing I, I also wanted to add was. Um, uh, there are also structured ways in approaching this, which I find helpful. I mean, we, for example, invented, not invented, I'm sure others have, have similar things, an innovation radar uh, already about 10 years ago when the world was even simpler, right? Because now we have so much regulation and technology and customer innovation and the Asians are doing this. And, you know, how the hell do you get a handle on that? And I think it's actually useful to have a structured approach. And uh, the time isn't available to do that now. But if anybody's interested, uh, please, please uh, contact me because you need to build a radar and a funnel mm -hmm. and do that in a systematic way to make sure your hit rate is good. Because otherwise you're just experimenting in the wild. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, fully agree. We, have, we also have a methodology indeed in the company for that. If I could just pick up one thing, I, I agree that indeed in bookkeeping and so on, you don't need the creative minds to just all of a sudden uh, create a new bookkeeping. I do, however, uh, believe, and that's also what Monica said, that also those people have to have the mindset of the innovation and what is going on because they have to be part of that of that that bigger whole. Of, they have to be on that bandwagon as well because otherwise they're not included. They will be left behind, and you will have a schism in your company. I mean, that's yes, a fair and point. thanks. The business cases don't don't yeah. stack up, and and they don't understand mm -hmm. the people yeah. who are running the business cases yeah. what yeah. what they do well yeah. how that works. That's going to be a problem. A very good point. Yeah, because a check. Yeah, a changed mindset and innovation and creation is not the same. I, I, I am 100% with you, Katrin, because that's exactly the, the big problem, because then they become left behind and they start to counter, be counterproductive to the change. Mm -hmm. And I think those are the, the, the pitfalls. And I also agree with Michael, there has to be systematic. So if I look at me being a startup, scale up fintech, we are really systematic and structured. So we have innovation process, we have R&D, product management, we lead the whole company through objectives and key results we measured because the only way to get quality and speed is through structured ways of working. Yeah, I think um, absolutely. You know, creative, creativity and innovation is uh, still requires discipline. <laughs> um, and yes. that comes, with, you know, and I think that's what I was kind of hinting with the stepping stones, a lot of the engineering yes rigor and you know um data management you're talking about banking people expect banks to yeah. have a whole yeah. series of, of non-negotiable things um, <laughs> we all expect yeah. um, if we're going to trust them yeah. looking after our money so um uh, yeah very good i might just um uh, um point to um ibrahim in the in the uh, chat had a specific question for michael uh from your presentation you talked about the hackathon um that came up with the dating uh, scientist um app uh, have you got another one coming up on the horizon? And actually, that might be a general question for um, uh, for Monica and Katrina as well about some of the things that you see, you know, that you get people involved in um, uh, externally in terms of developers and so on. I mean, we run regular hackathons, and I'm sure the other colleagues uh, do too, right? I mean, this is a wonderful way of unlocking again lots of creativity. I mean, one thing we're seeing more and more. Uh, I loved Monica's presentation on her, her carbon carbon app is that more and more are now actually going not just to make what's making money, but to actually doing something valuable to society. And there's a whole whole ecosystem now emerging, open banking for good, you know, which is not primarily about making money. It has to be sustainable, of course, but it's mainly about how do you, how do you improve inclusion? For example, some of the work we're doing in Indonesia or in Africa, that, that's the main cause why they're doing open banking, to increase inclusion. That's a social uh, agenda. It's not, not making the rich richer, 
or mm -hmm. uh, or even in in uh, mm -hmm. in the COVID times, uh, there's an increased attention to mental health. And if you mash up lots of information you get from an account, see how much he's drinking, how much he's communicating uh, mm. with friends, and mash that up with some other data, you can get some really good early warning signs about people who are at risk in mental health. So this is, uh, I think that's a fantastic trend at the moment, which you discover through hackathons and looking outside your normal horizon. That, uh, or, or just one final example, better investment. You know, people want to invest in better things, not just with the highest returns, but uh, would actually don't invest in, I don't know, in oil and in uh, child labor and whatever, and, and, and banks can help uh, guide their customers with that. So this whole thing, open banking for good, I think is an amazing new trend, which, uh, which is now, now coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I also believe that there is definitely value in it because I was also uh, very happy to listen to Monica's presentation. We're also working quite uh, well. It's it's now um, uh, to say it's not a new trend, but it's it's becoming more and more important. Um, the uh, the entire sustainability topic. We also have a, a, an internal program for that, but we're also looking at you know how can you make sure that, um, for example, indeed as a customer, could you to a certain extent that uh, you want to have impact on these big companies but you don't know which one is doing mm. good or bad apart from mm. what you read in the press mm. or find on google so helping a customer there and indeed we are all a bit lazy it's true me too i have to admit it <laughs> then then i think it's 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 amazing work because i also wrote it down one of my former colleagues is now heading the sustainability program so um it's uh, i will definitely bring them in contact to you because it's not indeed it's about value but it's value for society and if it's value for yes. society at the end of the day everybody profits and banks yes. definitely so from that perspective it's maybe not direct income but in the long run and if you say okay i'm here with, in the long run i'm a systemic bank and 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 we already have for a long time uh, sustainable investments that's something that we already have for a long time uh, but going really further and helping customers take that next mm. step changing behavior how can mm. we support that uh, that's something mm. that uh, that's definitely uh, next next on the radar and extremely important i believe yeah, and and for me, I I agree. Like it's it's really like Michael and Katrin said. It's it's that's what APIs are for. Mm -hmm. It's to make a better world. And the good thing with with payment processing and and data hubs and banks are that it's about storing data that is valuable. So from get go, the compliance requirements are really big. And I know that everyone keeps crying about that it's so a lot and regulation, but it's there to protect and serve. So it can be seen as a you know benefit. So I, I, I really hope that. And, and coming back to the question about the hackathon, what we actually did now, uh, you know, this carbon action was born out of a hackathon. It was like, now we need to sit down and like, what do we actually do? And how could we do things that matter to have the purpose? And then it was like, ah, oh, and that was how it was born. But then what we now launched in Finland as a start starting program is a future impact builder where we are collaborating with a, 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 an old bank and an insurance company and then a pension company. Uh, and then you're like, oh, my God, like pensions. Who wants to think about that? I keep telling my kids we're never going to get any. Pen you're not going to get any pensions we because of the system. But it's about saving and having this long term view about my life. As I said, 30, 40 years, unfortunately, goes by pretty fast in the end of the day. So it's it's good to have long term things and do short term actions. Oh, thank you. And um, we're, we're actually getting, if you can believe it, already quite close to um, to uh, to closing this out. So I might um, give now that you've each had a chance to listen to each other's presentations and uh, hear some of the questions that that have been coming through. I might ask each of you to just summarise in terms of take out what you've learned out of uh, um, the the panel session. I'm oh, sorry, the um, uh, this track this afternoon. Um, because all of this, the conferences like this are about idea sharing and uh, keeping up to date. Katrina, I might ask you to start because you, you said you've got a, took an action away already. Um, for yes, your... well, uh, unfortunately, but... due to my technical issues, I was not able to follow Michael's presentation. I was very, very sorry about that. But, uh, well, uh, let's say that IT was not with me. Um, but uh, I think the, from, um, I, I, in general, also from the panel discussion, um, the belief to, to be open and to be innovative is, is definitely there. And, and I believe that's very important because I am a 
big fan of open innovation. I don't believe anything will happen, anything will change if you are there in an ivory tower drawing something on a paper and saying, I had the best idea in the world. So I believe every the fact that it is all becoming more open and there is way more cooperation both in the financial sector as beyond is 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 very important and will benefit all of us. Regarding really the sustainability and uh, the, the app, I will check out, uh, because I understood it's with Rabobank, which is typically in Holland, and uh, we're just a site in Belgium. <laughs> so from that perspective, I already pinged my uh, my colleague that uh, said, you know, you should check this out, uh, especially if it's API based. We are also looking for those things, you know, how could we support this, expose this maybe even uh, on in, in our app or um, benefit from that and, and see if there can uh, can be more uh, more actions really based on that. Yeah, I, I can go for it. I, I have the same problem. Unfortunately, I, I didn't hear all of Michael's uh, presentation and, and Katrien was a bit breaking up. But all in all, uh, when I looked at uh, other uh, things and here, it's about we are all collaborating. Some Sometimes we can be competitors. Sometimes we can be uh, each other's uh, collaboration enablers. But in the end of the day, it's about building ecosystems. And, and here, the open banking is a good way about, I think the bigger thing with open banking is about a global mindset change also there. So before every data was supposed to be siloed, and also there's a lot of regulation in the EU and everywhere, like how do you keep data on soil, in the country, in everything, especially in banking and data centers and so forth and so forth. And then you look at the uh, networks, they are already go global. So really embracing the APIs and, and experimenting in that sense. There are a lot of good sandboxes out there, good ideas that you can pitch. And as Michael said, when you have the hackathons, go there, pitch your ideas and just make it happen. So in the end of the day, it's about trying and doing stuff. Uh, and uh, I really think that the API days is a good platform to hook up with like-minded or very different minded and find uh, ways to, to take things forward. Michael? Well, I had the pleasure of listening to both the other talks because I was I was first, so I had to get through the technical problems early. Um, so I was I was really thrilled to hear. I mean, KVC I've known before uh, how well ahead they are. Also, this idea of um, this mashup economy, which I also tried to talk about, that you bring your APIs into other ecosystems, you take other ecosystems in your thing. I I know few banks who have mastered that as well as KVC. So congratulations on that. And uh, I've, I've been uh, uh, working on innovations and the surprising side of innovations, which is my theme today as well for, for a long time. And the, the, the first example that, that I was aware of was Alexander Graham Bell. When he invented the telephone, he was asked what this strange device might be useful for. And uh, he said, I, I've no idea. I'm a technician. I just made it possible. But since you asked me uh, what the application might be, uh, remote concert listening, that's what I imagine is, is going to be its main use. So you're at home and you, you dial into the opera. Hasn't quite turned out that way. And I think we're in a similar stage now with, with open banking. We're just experimenting now and it's going to go in all sorts of amazing ways. And I hope it's a lot of them will also be open banking for good, like Monica said. And I'm privileged to be in the rare position of being the only man in a largely female panel. So you've already uh, achieved that. Okay, thank you for inviting me. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Um, I think that's a, a great note to um, to finish on um, from uh, from each of you. Uh, it's been an absolute delight. Thank you so much for your time this afternoon. And thank you to the audience for your questions uh, and for listening in. Uh, these talks are available later on demand. Um, and meanwhile, you have the opportunity right away to go and visit some of the booths, um, uh, stretch your legs uh, and uh, talk to the partners in the village. And I uh, hope very much that you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you all very much. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.